Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to actually get into AutoCAD and cover three major topics. How to set up your AutoCAD user interface for maximum productivity and usability. The AutoCAD command line and some of the essential keyboard shortcuts you'll need to know as you begin 2D drafting and 3D modeling in AutoCAD. And the menu bar and tool ribbons, the difference between the two, and some of the extra tools that are available to you as you progress through your projects. So let's get into AutoCAD now and we'll start to cover those things one by one in further detail. Okay, when you open up AutoCAD for the first time after a fresh install, you'll be presented with a screen you see here. Under the Get Started, click on Start Drawing to create a new drawing. Once the new drawing opens up, the first thing I want you to do is click on the red AutoCAD A in the upper left hand corner. We're going to select Save As, and we're going to save a file to our desktop. and we'll call that file AutoCAD Setup. And hit Save. Now that you've saved that drawing, there are a few steps you will need to take to get your UI set up for 3D modeling. Starting with the workspace. If you don't see this workspace up here, you click on this arrow, this down arrow here, and select workspace right here. So I just turned it off. This, you may have a screen that looks like this and you want to turn it back on. Right now it's set to drafting and annotation by default. What we want to do is click on this and select 3D modeling as our new base. So now we're, we've just changed the entire setup to be geared towards 3D modeling. Next, I want you to note the command line currently floating at the middle of the bottom of the screen. This is the command center for everything you're going to do in AutoCAD, so pay close attention to what's going on in this as you begin to learn the software. It's best practice to dock this interface at the bottom of the screen and expand it upward to display three or four lines of your command history, like so. So you just grab, dock, and expand this two or three lines so you can see one two three four I've got four lines of history plus my command line and that's a typical way to do it now I want you to right click anywhere in the black part of this screen and select options at the bottom of this drop down menu this is your options menu and provides you access to a vast assortment of software interface options we're only going to focus on a few for today first off select the display tab here at the top and there are a few checkboxes that are off by default that I want you to turn on. First, check the box next to display scroll bars in drawing window. Check the box next to show rollover tooltips. And if this box for display layout and model tabs is unchecked, check it and make sure it's on. Second, we want to set up our cursor for use while we're drafting. Right here we have a crosshair size, by default it's set to 5. We're going to take that all the way to 100, and I'll explain why later. So what that did is it just made our cursor fill the whole screen up and down and east and west. The last thing I want you to do in your options menu is select the selection tab near the end of the tabs at the top and take this pick box size and let's bump it up a slider maybe one or two clicks what that does is it makes this pick box on your screen bigger so you can see what you're selecting a little easier when you get into it we'll click apply and hit ok finally type units into the command line and press enter this will bring up a new dialog box set your length type to architectural your precision to 1 32nd of an inch and your insertion scale to inches if it's not already there. This will format your dimensioning settings to something you will recognize within the United States, the Imperial System of Measurement. If you are not from the US, you may wish to set this to decimal and set this to millimeters, changing everything to a metric system of measurement. We're going to change that back and press OK. And that's it for UI setup. We're ready to go. With that all taken care of, let's go over a few essential keyboard shortcuts. 
As with most computer software you may have used in school or business, there are some standard shortcuts to mention. Control plus Z will undo a command or a series of commands depending on how many times you press it. Control Z. Control plus Y will redo those commands in case you've gone too far. Control Y. Control S will save your drawing. Let's do that now. Control S saves your drawing and that is something that you're going to want to do quite often in AutoCAD. This is definitely a lifesaver and you should get used to pressing Control S very often. Control A will select all. It will select everything that's on the screen. If you press the escape key, it will deselect anything you've selected on the screen and it will get you out of any active commands you may have initiated within the command line. You will use this very often while working in AutoCAD, so familiarize yourself with it if you're not already there. The Enter key is used to cycle through options within a command. It will solidify the completion of a command and it can be used to start a new instance of the last command you entered. The spacebar can be used in place of the Enter key depending on a personal preference. Give each a try and see what you like. Lastly, let's discuss the function keys. A few of these will be used quite often. F2 will pull up an extended history box. In this box you'll see everything I've done since we started this video. So within this file, anything we've done will show up in this extended history box. F2 again will turn that box off. All that is, is an extension of the command line that you see at the bottom of your screen. When you press F3, you will toggle your O-Snap on and off. O-Snap is something I'll explain further on in the fourth video. When you press F7, it will turn your background grid off and on. It toggles that grid so you can see it or not see it. When you press F8, it's going to turn your ortho snaps on and off. For a quick example, if I start a line command here, I can drag this line anywhere I want. If I press F8, it's going to lock that line in a straight up and down or left and right manner. If I press F8 again, I can drag it wherever I want. This is pretty handy when you're drawing things that need to be square. When you press F9, you'll be toggling your grid snap on and off. Grid snap is a setting to set each increment that you move your line in a specific dimension. So you can set your grid snap toggle to 1 32nd of an inch, or 1 16th of an inch, or 1 inch, or 1 millimeter, or 1 mile, whatever you want it to be. So every time you drag over, that's how far your line is going to go. See how that kind of snaps there? Without that setting on, I can drag more freely and snap wherever I want. This also comes in quite handy when you're building things to a specific dimension. So now it is on and off. We'll press escape to escape that line command. We'll discuss these snap and grid settings in greater detail later on in this class. Now let's take a quick look at the menu bar and tool ribbons, then we can move on to the class project. Briefly, let's look at the top of the screen and you'll see one menu bar. First thing I want you to do is type menu bar into the command line and press enter. You'll see by default it's set to zero. Let's change that to one and press enter. Now we have two menu bars at the top of our screen. So briefly we'll start from the left and move to the right. File, Edit, View, Insert, Format, Tools, Draw, Dimension, Modify, Window, Help, Parametric, and Express. When we move on to the second toolbar You'll see Home, Solid, Surface, Mesh, Visualize, Parametric, Insert, Annotate, View, Manage, Output, Add-ins, Collaborate, Featured Apps, and Express Tools. These are all tabs that we're going to expand on further as we carry on through this class. Hopefully you were able to follow along with that and get your AutoCAD user interface set up for maximum productivity. The next video we're going to hand draw our dice, the project for this class, and get ready to bring it into AutoCAD. And when we get into AutoCAD in the fourth video you should be prepared to just start drafting and follow along with that class as well.